Welcome back. And you're looking live now at Vice President Joe Biden speaking now in Pittsburgh uh, on Labor Day. He's talking about Pennsylvania and how he considers it a second home for him. As we know, one of the all important states to win in just a little more than 60 days now. We'll keep a close eye on that. Well, the bloodshed in Syria continues after President Obama and Russian President Vladimir Putin failed to reach an agreement on a ceasefire. The two leaders meeting on the sidelines of the G20 summit in China and vowing to keep searching for a deal that ends the war in Syria. In the meantime, Democratic vice presidential nominee Tim Kaine putting the blame squarely on Russia. I don't believe in a blame America first strategy. Russia went into Georgia, the South Ossetia region of Georgia, when President Bush was, was in office, before President Obama was elected. And he went into Crimea uh, during the Obama administration. But to try to say that's the U.S.'s fault is ridiculous. The guy is a dictator who uh, represses journalists. Is it ridiculous for the U.S. to bear some blame? KT McFarland, a Fox News national security analyst and a former deputy assistant secretary of state in the Reagan administration. KT, great to see you. Happy Labor Day. Over the last couple of days, I spoke to several experts who, who both seem to reach the same agreement that President Obama is getting played here by Vladimir Putin. What do you think? Well, played by Vladimir Putin, played by the Russians, played by the Chinese, played by the North Koreans, played by the Iranians. So, yeah, I think the United States does bear a good bit of the blame because they've allowed themselves to get blamed and played. You know, the leading from behind strategy of President Obama, it's now starting to show dividends. We're being left behind and we're being pushed around. And they may be insignificant things like the Chinese couldn't find a staircase to bring up to the plane when President right. Obama landed in China. But they could be more significant things like the Russians basically telling the United States, like, if you guys are in the way, we're going to bomb you. And no additional ability of the United States to have any leverage to, to calm them down. In the fight against ISIS and trying to remove uh, Bashar al-Assad uh, in Syria, which, by the way, is President Obama's firm position, uh, mm -hmm. that's anathema to the Russians. Was there any hope of a, of a deal here with them? I don't think so. You know, look, we're deluding ourselves to thinking that we're players now in the Middle East. There are two sides left in the Middle East. One is a side that's Russia, Iran, and Assad. We're saying, no, Assad has to go. The second side is ISIS. Well, nobody's for them, right? But we're somehow this mythical third force where we're, we want Assad to go, we want to defeat ISIS, but we're kind of standing there all by ourselves, stuck in the middle of this civil war. And we're really not in a position to play in the Middle East anymore. We've ceded that position to the Russians and to the Iranians. And the problems of the Middle East today are not going to be solved by President Obama or even Secretary Kerry or even potentially President Clinton sitting down and trying to talk to the Russians. The Russians are, are just running circles around the United States foreign policy at this point. And are they also hacking into our systems and trying to interfere in the U.S. election? You know what really was stunning to me? Greg, is when Vladimir Putin was asked, are you hacking into the American election system? Are you doing something with the Democrat? What are you doing? And he said, no government state entity is hacking into the American <laughs> elections. And then he smiled. Well, what more proof do you need? Yeah. I don't think Putin has decided he wants this candidate or that candidate. I think he just wants to scramble it. I think he wants to interfere with our electoral process. He wants to hack into it. He wants to embarrass us. And then he wants to sit back and watch us kind of fumble to figure out what's next. Yeah, he also said, oh, gee, what does it matter who did the hacking as long as the information was made public, which is the same thing as, <laughs> gee, we did it. Um, I want to ask yeah. you, because you brought it up. Okay, so President Obama arrives in Hangzhou, China, for the, the big G20 summit. Mm -hmm. Lots of talk planned about uh, global economic growth there. Every single leader of every nation who is attending gets a red carpet treatment. Not only did they not pull out the red carpet for President Obama, they didn't even pull out the staircase. He, you know, he had to get off the back of the plane uh, at one of his own staircases. What's going on? And by the way, let me, before you answer that, let me play this little clip. There he is coming off the plane, the back of the plane. There's this almost fisticuffs going on the tarmac be between a couple of officials. Take a listen. Thank you. 
หยันครับพี่เท้าเข้าถึงเท้าแอบหูโอเคเจ้าจะเนี่ยอันยกอันยกการจัดการเจ้า They were keeping Obama officials away from President Obama. Susan Rice standing off in the corner, and they're not even letting her come close to President Obama. What do you think is going on here? Well, the Chinese are saying, "Oh, we didn't. It was a big mistake. We didn't really mean to do it." They deliberately did that. They deliberately humiliated him three times. One, they didn't give him plane stairs to walk off the plane. Number two, they kept his national security advisor, who they knew who she was. They kept her away from him. And three, they manhandled the American media. Now it, it's a slight, and for the Chinese to do that in China, things like insults and losing face—that's right. a big deal. That that was telegraphed all over the world, and certainly all over. Why Asia. would they do that? Do they have nothing but contempt for the U.S. Yeah, or, or for President Obama? Push him around a little bit of contempt. Let, let's you know. Let's show him who's boss. Let's show him who's in charge. Let's show him that America's a declining world power. China's a rising world power. President Obama should have stayed on that plane until the steps came. And if the steps didn't come, the plane should have taken off and gone somewhere else. The minute you start subjecting yourself and and sort of laughing off these humiliations, more humiliations happen. That's why I think for the rest of the Obama administration,、yeah. the countries and our enemies, they're going to grab what they can while they're grabbing's good. KT McFarland, thank you very much for being with us this Labor Day. Have a great day. Thanks, Greg.